Good morning. Good morning. I will try to read this with the same enthusiasm that John had. Um, <laughs> the reading this morning comes from John chapter 1, verses 29 through 42. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the chosen one. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas. This is the word of the Lord. So I serve a little church, and I'm about to show you our really high-tech technology. This is my phone. I'm about to push the go live button on Facebook. If you follow me, that's the excitement that you get for we don't have big cameras and I'm not I have all the permission slips I need for all the things so this is all you get is the message so we are now joining with all of my Facebook friends and anyone who's interested and then of course because I forgot my little booth it's a really awkward position but it's great so you ready you ready for this high-tech moment this makes Alec real nervous ready here we go It's starting. Hi. It's going to be weird for people. It's a different background because I'm coming from Florence Christian Church today. Now, I think it's interesting what John said because I took a little different point of it because I love like that. Behold the Lamb of God. It's like Santa. I know him. Behold the Lamb of God. And as somebody who just finished doing Elf Jr. as a show, I've spent a lot of quality time thinking about Santa and how I know him and thinking about my relationship as well. But what was interesting is he kept going, behold, the Lamb of God. But then John would follow it up, keep saying, I don't know him. Huh? That would be kind of like Buddy the Elf being like, behold, Santa. But I don't know him mean you don't know him? I mean, this is really weird coming from John the Baptist. Of course you knew him. Your mother and his mother's were cousins. They were really close with one another. Remember, Elizabeth, your mother, was the one who celebrated the news of Jesus's birth. What do you mean you don't know him? You were family, John. You probably grew up together or at least saw each other during major holidays. Is there, if there's anyone who knew Jesus, shouldn't it be John the Baptist? The cousin who's around the same age, the one who has also been given some great destiny in those narrative stories we read in the other Gospels? Yet we're not in Matthew or Luke. We are in the Gospel of John. And I invite you to note that the writer or writers of this Gospel is often what I call hippy-dippy. 
It's why I love the Gospel of John. It is deep. It is cryptic. It is esoteric. And sometimes the Gospel of John is just plain weird. The Gospel of John invites each of us to know things in different and new ways. Because the cousin that John once knew is now living and growing into a person with a higher calling than any of us have ever known. John is inviting each of us to see what we thought we knew with new eyes, new ears, and a renewed awareness of the divinity around us. Because as we come to see Jesus in a new way, we are also invited to see ourselves in a new way. We are invited to come and see our faith communities in a new way. We are invited to see the new year in a new way. And we are invited to be known and to know others in a new way. Now, to be known. It's interesting, the average person knows anywhere from 600 to 1,600 people based on a few of the recent articles I read. Now, if you're curious about how many people do you know, Fred Jacobs wrote an article about the work of a professor at the University of Washington. Professor Tyler McCormick estimates that 1% of the population in our society is either named Michael, Stephanie, or James. Thus, if you know five Michaels, you probably know around 500 people. But is to know others the same as being known? John may know Jesus, but John is forcing us to recognize that what we know is not always the same as being known. We live in a world that seems to care about how many people you know, but our faith reminds us that it isn't the quantity of people, but the quality of relationships that matter. Thus, we must ask, how do we get to be known? Even as I stand here, each of you has been assessing me as the new person in the room. Your assessment is going to be different if you have met me before, if you have seen me before, Ooh. or if this is the first time you've ever even heard me speak. It also depends on what you've heard about me or maybe what not. It depends on if I remind you of someone you like or maybe someone you don't. Maybe I talk too fast. Or you wished you'd known Susan wasn't preaching so you could have actually taken a day off. <laughs> but then you have to ask, what do I know about you as Florence Christian Church? How will I, in this time of transition, be able to see you and make each of you feel truly invited and known in this united journey to be with Jesus both as a community and as individuals. Isn't the Gospel of John fun? All the hippy-dippy insights and questions that come from this Gospel? And so probably you actually know more about me from your observations over the last few minutes. But just so we can know one another and then move to being known, I will share with you some of the things you may not know about me. First, I took the Michael Stephanie James test. I seem to be acquainted with around 2,000 people. Now, I think that number is actually probably a little bit higher based on things I know from social media and the fact that I have a very pronounced spiritual gift of being loud. I love knowing people. I love seeing people. I love bringing people together in a deep faith that creates the amazing and fun adventures of life together. I love helping people be known in divine ways. 
I also was born and raised in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. I still go to Camp Wakandaho. I've been a disciple of Christ my whole life, and my great-great-great-grandparents are buried at Cane Ridge. I have served churches in Kentucky, Colorado, California, and Ohio, and until recently worked for the general level for the last 11 years. Now, I know that you all have some new people to disciples, so I'm going to explain to you that it is called the general level church because it also includes Canada. So we can't call it the national level church because then that upsets our brothers and sisters in Canada. Other things to know, that my family tree is big and beautiful and complex, and yet my day-to-day crew is pretty stereotypical. I have a husband, two kids, ages 13 and soon to be 11, and a new puppy dog like Diana. Along with Jesus, I love Harry Potter, Disney, musical theater, and I've known sometimes to run. And these are the facts to kind of help us know each other. But it takes deeper work to be known. It takes important insights, like I have also suffered from depression. I love a good bourbon, and I've heard this church is okay with that. (laughs) I'm in the middle of starting a new business, and I am scared to death. And as I thought about these pieces of information to share, I wanted to share with you kind of an experience that my closest friend from college and I always had. We lived together for three years, and we were in the same major. That meant we saw each other a lot. And when you see someone a lot, you know the details of each other's lives, but we also knew that sometimes that means you're not really paying attention. You don't actually see them. You don't ask good questions that get more insightful answers to not just know, but to be known. So we would ask questions when we were walking sometimes that said something like, what is something little that happened that still really mattered to you or you just want to share? Because in our relationship as friends, we didn't want to lose knowing one another on that deeper level of being known. I also think that's why some of the strongest friendships are not usually with people we see all the time. That the people we see all the time assume they know what is happening in our lives, or we assume we know what is happening in their lives, so we forget to ask the questions that truly invite each one of us to grow, to be seen, and to be known as a constant changing divine creation of God, engaging in this world and new calls every day. And as some of you may know, I also serve as the part-time pastor at Independence Christian Church down the road. I've been there for eight years, yet sometimes the only thing people know about that church happened over 20 years ago because we aren't able to take time to be known as communities and as individuals today. Now, what that means for you is that I'm not going to be around all the time. I will be making what we've entitled cameos. And yet, every time that I engage with each of you, it is a rare opportunity to really get to know the 2024 version that no one else knows. Now, some of you may also think that I'm only here for the young people and their families, that you and I don't have to be known to one another. And while, yes, that's true, that is my focus, the reality is that every young person needs at least five faithful adults if they are going to remain faithful in adulthood. These young adults and young people relationships are not just about knowing another child's name, but truly engaging with young people and knowing them in the ways that they are now to be seen, in ways that reveals not only who they are, who they may be, but who you are and who you may be and what God is calling you to do in that. Who are we being called to be? I always take a moment just to have a silence for whatever's happening out there. Pray for that person. Okay. 
there are probably people in this room who know more about you than anyone else. People that you feel know you. Some of you might be sitting next to them. They may reveal the best in you. They may sometimes reveal the worst in you. And there are people who you have entrusted to walk with you and to see you, and there are probably people in this room for whom you are that person. Yet the challenge is, are you willing to know more about those people? Are you willing to let others in this room in? Are you willing to invite others and, more importantly, be invited in? Are you willing to come and see what is different about people you have, may have known for a long time? Children that may be yours who aren't really the same as they were a year ago. Because we are all invited to come and see what we thought we once knew in a new way. John invites us to see ourselves and to see Jesus and to see others in a new way. And we are invited to let the Spirit of God flow upon all of us to be more present with God's divinity within us. I don't know many of you, but I hope that each of us gets to be a little more known in the ways that God has planned and maybe you take time to know one another in a way that is deeper than God has planned. Maybe right now we are all sitting as John was saying, I don't know him. Because that's the way that we see God. And that is what you are invited to do. You are invited to come and see.